Hi, my name is Andrea Clary. I'm a field applications engineer for the Keithley products. And today I want to talk through using the digital I.O. that are available on a DB9 connector on the rear panel of one of our touchscreen model source meters. In this case, I happen to be using a model 2461, but this applies equally well to any of the uh, models within that touchscreen uh, series line. So as, uh, as described here, there's uh, this nine pin connector and there are uh, five lines of digital I.O. available on that. You'll note here on pin seven, there's also a five volt you know, power supply up to 500 milliamps available on here. And so on a little breadboard, let's talk a little more detail what's what's on there. So I've got just a, a small LED and some series R to, to current limit, and that's connected between the five volts and then a digital line. So normally when we power up this 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 instrument, we boot it up, the there's a pull up resistor on this digital I.O. So it was also sitting at five volts. So right now there's no delta V across this and the LED is not illuminated. Now think, you know, this instead of an LED, this could be a relay, something else. So so it would be uh, not actuated at this time. But I want to, in order to light this LED up or to uh, activate the relay coil, I would use active low logic. So I would command this digital line to go to the logic zero state that would create a delta V across here. And then by the specification off our data sheets, we can see that each of those lines can sync you know, or accept as much as 50 milliamps of current would flow into the digital bit. Um, in contrast, sometimes people will try to uh, put their device, say, between ground and the digital bit and then use, use you know, uh, command it to the logic high state. And, and in this case, a lot less uh, current will flow, maximum two milliamps out of a logic one. Um, but then you also have, well, what happens during the initial power up and so forth. So with this scheme of, of active low logic, you can be connected on this digital line and things will be off when we initially boot up boot up our instrument. Um, the other uh, the other line I have, I'm also uh, um, bringing out line number two just through a little momentary switch here and then I am connecting that back to ground so that when I press the switch button, it will pull this digital input from its, you know, logic one state It's going to pull it down down to low and let me switch over here to test script builder. You see, I already have a an active connection here. I'm going to do a star. You can see the model number there and so forth. OK, and so I'm going to use that second line as a. To detect the edge that will occur when I press the switch and transition it from a logic one to a logic low state that falling that falling edge will be detected. So. This line here is going to sit here and it's going to uh, wait for that to occur for as long as whatever I set the timeout. In this case, I've got it at 100 seconds. Um, now, if I time out, then the returned result here would be a false. Uh, but if if it does detect the edge, then the return value will be true. And in this case, I'm saying, OK, if it's true, then I'm going to uh, essentially turn that digital uh, that LED on and off a few times here. Um, otherwise, I would uh, just notify myself that the trigger was not detected and then we're all done. So let's give this a run. I'll run this. Let's switch the focus here. I'm going to reach up and press the button. And there's our LED on, off, on, off, and then we're going to get one more time. Okay, very simple. Well, I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about how to make use of the digital I.O. lines on the rear panel of a source meter. Thanks. Bye bye.